Hello again everybody and welcome back. This is the second video in a five part video series where we're going to build up to a finale car counting project. And uh, please view the previous video in this uh, series if you have not already as well as the um, installation video on how to install MGU CV um, which is a wrapper for OpenCV within Visual Studio. Uh, and I'll link both of those prerequisites in the description below. But continuing on with today's uh, topic, so we're going to jump into image subtraction here. So if we bring up a browser and we go to GITHUB, uh, MICRO, microcontrollers, and more, and then take out the spaces. And there we go. And then if we go to here, and then repositories, and we're going to look for uh, OpenCV3, whoops, not that, um, SUBTR, and let's go down to here. Okay, OpenCV3. Um, Multiple object tracking, we're going to get to that. That'll be the fourth video. But for this video here, OpenCV3, Image Subtraction, Visual Basic. And this is pretty similar contents to the uh, previous repository, only we've added a class to represent our blobs. And there's the AVI, which again is included with um, OpenCV. And then we have our main and then our README. So let's go ahead and fire up Visual Studio. And we will set up our references and then build up our form. And since this uh, this portion, setting up the references and building up the form, is the same as the previous um, project. I'm probably going to fast forward through this, but actually I'll, I'll show the uh, references part since that's that's always worth going through. That's that's a source of common confusion for people that are new to using MGUCV. So we go to Visual Basic, uh, Windows Forms application, then we're going to go ahead and name our project. So we'll paste in the repository name will work as well as anything. So choose Visual Basic Windows Forms application, choose your name, and then location, uncheck those. And again, I'm simply going to be following the cheat sheet from the installation tutorial as I do this. Um, please refer to the installation tutorial if um, further explanation for any of these steps would be helpful. So then we're going to go ahead and rename the form FRM main. And yes, that's okay. And then we always have to start it. And there's one reference that does not automatically update, which is going to be this one right here. So then we're going to do, whoops, FRM main and now it will work so we can go ahead and run the program and there's our form doesn't do anything yet but it's working so now we're going to go to uh, project and add reference and then browse and we're going to add these DLLs here those four we're using uh, MGUCV 3.1.0 currently and then we're going to choose OK and then we're going to go to project add existing item and then from the cheat sheet to save some time I'm going to copy and paste in, and I just realized I forgot to change the CPU to, uh, let's see here, to 64-bit. So new and x64, any CPU, create solution platforms. Okay, now that that says x64, we can, unfortunately, we have to repeat the previous step here. So uh, browse, and then we can add these four again here. There we go. And then choose OK. And then we're going to go to Project and add existing item. And I'm simply going to copy in this path here from the cheat sheet. Again, see the cheat sheet if you're unclear on the uh, details, the installation tutorial and the accompanying cheat sheet. And then we're going to highlight all four of those DLLs and choose Add. And then we're going to choose these four DLLs down here. And choose Properties, Copy to Output Directory, Copy Always. And now at this point, all we have left to do is, well, actually, before we build up the form, let's copy and paste in the beginning of the project here. So if we go to FRM Main and then Raw, and this is what we can copy and paste out of. So I'm just going to copy and paste in the code at the top here so we have the names to copy and paste from. So if we go to here and give ourselves a little bit of space to work with, and then we copy and paste in the top of the project like so and now we're simply going to add these components to the form and I'm going to fast forward through setting up the form since it's the same as the previous project. Okay so our form's all built up and now we're ready to continue with adding code. So if we check our events here, we'll find that we have two events, I believe, form closing and button open file click, and I believe that's it. And there we go. So now we're going to go back to here and make sure that we've properly named the button. Button open file, go ahead and double click on it, and then we're going to go back to the design view, and then we're going to go to the lightning bolt, and then let's see, form closing. 
must not be on the form. There we go. Make sure you click on the title bar up here so that you choose the form. So form closing. And then we're going to move that up in front of the button click. And we don't need these extra spaces here. Now we can simply copy and paste in the rest of the code that isn't there already. So that's going to be our member variable section. And that's going to go right there. And then we're going to have form main closing, which is just two lines. And so we can drop that in. And then we're going to have the button open file click event. And that's going to go right there. And then we're going to change the spacing just a smidge. And then we're going to copy and paste in the button open file click event. And there we go. And then we have our additional function here, detect blobs and update GUI to paste in. And that's going to go right there. And now we should be ready to uh, test. Actually, there's one more thing we have to do, of course. We have to add our blob class. So we're going to go to Project, um, Add New Item, and then we're going to go to Class when it comes up here. And then we're going to go to Blob. And that should be with capital B. And there we go. And then we're going to copy and paste in the contents of Blob from the GitHub site. And we can just copy and paste in the entire thing here. So go ahead and paste that in. And it's a pretty simple class, but it's going to get more elaborate as we get towards the car counting video uh, additionally. So now we should be ready to go ahead and test. And we're going to test on the same uh, video as we used in the previous project. So we can go to projects and then the same, uh, let's see here, details. And then we're going to go to the same 768 by 576 AVI. And let's take a quick look at some of the processing steps we have here. So here's the original form. We'll get back to that in a minute. Here's our thresholded image of the people walking around and you can see there's sort of hollow spots in the middle because of the way that the lighting works sometimes you'll get a contour that goes around the edge actually that's the next frame here is contours actually these contours turn, turn out pretty well for the most part but you can see sometimes they're kind of hollow in the middle because of the way the lighting works out you might not get fully the contour on one side so what we'll do there is we're going to get convex holes and that's going to give us much more uh, reliable and consistent blob detection and then in in this output window here, what we're doing is, let's go ahead and play the video again. And in the output video uh, output window here, what we're simply doing is we're drawing a um, red box around each of the blobs that we found. Uh, that's simply the, the surrounding rectangle. OpenCV provides that functionality, and then a green dot at the center as well. So let's take a quick look at the code and see how we're doing it. And I did forget to review the code in the first video, so we'll take a look at the uh, code to play a video as well. So form closing, this is simply to keep the program from hanging when it closes. Uh, we have this Boolean variable here, form closing is true. And then we're going to jump out of our infinite while loop if, if that's um, set to false. And then here we're going to have our button open file click event. And here we simply uh, declare a dialog result <clears throat> a box and go ahead and open the current video and then we perform some error checking here and then some more error checking here and we update the label on the form to say the name of the file that we open and then we call our detect blobs and update GUI function and here's where we have our two uh, frames which we declare as OpenCV mat type and then we read um, the frame uh, from the video for each of those and then we jump into our infinite while loop as long as the form is not closing uh, we declare our list of blobs and that's a list of this class here, Blob, which is relatively simple. It has contour, bounding rect, uh, single center position, diagonal size, aspect ratio, and the area of the bounding rectangle. And then we have our uh, frames here uh, that we're going to clone so that we don't have to manipulate the original frame one and two. Then we're going to convert to uh, grayscale. Then we're going to Gaussian blur both frames. Then we're going to call abs diff, and what that's going to do is it's going to take frame one and frame two, that is the previous frame and the current frame, and then it's going to find the absolute value difference of the two. And then we're going to threshold that with the threshold function, and that's going to give us image thresh, which was one of the output images that we saw a moment ago, and then we go ahead and show that. And then we're going to dilate twice and erode, and just experimentally I find that I found that dilating twice with a 5x5 window and then eroding once with a 5x5 window seemed to give the best results. You could try um, different numbers of dilates or erodes or different uh, window sizes if you like. 
And then, of course, we copy threshold because we're about to call fine contours, and fine contours does change the image you pass into it. So you, you don't want to pass in the original one. You want to make sure to pass in a copy. And then that's going to get us contours. And then we're going to go ahead and draw those contours. And that was one of the, in this, these steps here, and that was one of the um, output images that you saw. And then we're going to declare our convex holes and then get our convex holes from our contours here. And then we're going to make sure that uh, those convex holes meet these criteria here that they're a certain size and within a certain aspect ratio and, and so on and if so we're going to add those uh, to our list of blobs and then uh, at that point we are going to uh, draw our convex holes now that we have chosen the convex holes that um, we would like to keep and screened out the ones we would like to have screened out and at this point it's pretty straightforward we simply um, draw here around each blob we draw the rectangle the red rectangle that you saw while the video was playing and the dot uh, in the middle is a very small green circle and then we simply update the image box on the form and then here uh, we're updating our variables for the next time around and then you want to call application dot do events to uh, give the operating give control back to the operating system momentarily to allow the screen to redraw and we're no longer in the first frame, so we'll update that variable, and then we loop back around again. So that's it, and hopefully that was beneficial um, as far as an intro to playing video in OpenCV and image subtraction. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at a prediction algorithm, and we're going to do so in the context of moving the mouse around. And then uh, when we've completed that, we're going to put these first three programs together into a multiple object tracking by image uh, subtraction program. So I'll see everybody in the next one.